Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to The Restoration Couple. Today's video is going to be all about tech. It's going to be to do really with the cameras and all the gear we use to produce our videos. So I've held off doing this for a long time. We've been asked several times over the years uh, what, how we produce our videos. Um, I kind of didn't want to do it because it goes down that whole tech side of things which isn't really that relevant on this channel. But at the end of the day, we've got to produce videos so we may as well let you know how we do it. So I'm going to start right back at the beginning. To start with, um, by trade I'm a photographer anyway, so I have a certain amount of gear which I use for my day job. Right from the outset we decided we didn't want to start confusing things and using pro kit for the YouTube stuff just because it's obviously a risk and I, I need that, it's kind of my bread and butter work. To start with we ended up just getting a, a little video camera recorder which is covered in dust uh, and it's a Panasonic, it was full HD and the main reason I went for this is because at the time, which was kind of five years ago, when you were wanted to film yourself, no DSLRs at the time could track your face or really autofocus. So I decided to go this route and it was a pretty bomb proof, simple uh, idea. We could just plonk it on the, on the tripod and work away. We always used a shotgun mic on top of this. Um, but it doesn't quite give you the, the look you want, it hasn't got the shallow depth of field, it hasn't, it's no good in low light and although the zoom was good, uh, it didn't have much else going for it. At a similar time we got um, another camcorder and I used this really, again it's quite dusty, I used this again at the time for weddings and it's a 4K, we don't really use it for the 4K but it's a, a decent quality uh, Panasonic again and at the time, if, you're, if we're filming like a concert for a friend or um, a wedding from the back of the church, then this can run over the half an hour limit, which an SLR stops at. So that's what we've used it for. I've used it a couple of times on the YouTube channel, but not for any uh, major videos. It's just been like a second point of view. That, that kind of spelt the end of, of this style of camera for us. Now, coming from a photography background, I've got all the infrastructure um, of Canon SLRs and lenses anyway, so it made sense to always stick with that. So the bulk of the filming on this channel happens on this battered 70D. It's got the kit lens on it, uh, but that's not a problem and I'll cover that in a second. Uh, it's covered in dust. I wouldn't dream of using it for any of my main work. Uh, it's specifically for the YouTube channel. It's several years old now and at the moment it's still churning out decent footage. The only benefit of moving up to an 80D or whatever comes out this year would be just a little bit more of the slow motion. The, I think the 80D does uh, 60p, 60 frames a second, so we could just slow things down and get a little bit of smoother footage if we wanted to. But for the, for the majority of work, this does the job fine. Now, I mentioned the kit lens. This, I've, although it's got a little hood on it, this kit lens, while for photography it's a bit soft, it's not particularly fast lens as far as um, the aperture, it's, it's not a bad, it's plastic, it, it, there's nothing quality about it, but it's an STM lens which uh, basically means it's, it's pretty much dead silent when it comes to focusing. So while I benefit from having a faster lens on here or a better quality lens, nearly all of the other lenses I own, which are L lenses or professional grade lenses, while they produce amazing stills, they are just that little bit too noisy at focusing or the image stabiliser for video work, uh, just because they get picked up by a shotgun mic. Now if I'm using a lapel mic or you know a, a clip mic, a tie clip mic on my jacket, then yeah, I can probably get away with it but it's still not quite as smooth when it comes to the autofocus and these budget STM lenses are pretty good for it. So I've got the Rode VideoMic Pro uh, which is up on that camera but that usually lives on here and that's kind of the go-to, it just goes everywhere and we can, I mean these Gorillapods are okay, they're pretty weak joins now, this one's been battered so it's not that supportive so we use tripods for most things. 
In addition to that, we usually have a GoPro kicking around somewhere. This one is uh, Hero 4 Silver, because it's got screen on the back, which um, is uh, obviously handy at setting up shots, because it's dustproof and waterproof if you want to get the close-up shots. I normally just move it around and get a few shots like that. Also, I tend to speed up the footage on this one, just because it's wider and, you know, it almost uses it like a time-lapse. There's a time-lapse feature on here, which I use occasionally, but most of the work we uh, are filming is usually 20 minutes max, so I tend to just shoot it as a film and speed it up. Talking of time-lapse, I've got a couple of time-lapse cameras. I've got these Brino, or um, this one's a Genius brand, but they're all the same. This is the 100. We've got the 200 as well, which isn't quite as waterproof, but I think you can get a case for it. I just don't use them because although they are literally one button put it up and it can record for six months in the garden they just they're, they're 720 they don't produce full hd footage uh, maybe when one comes out with full hd i would get another but for the time being i'm not using these if we do any extensions or you know a full build or something in the future then yes i would have a couple of these set up for the six months or whatever it takes uh, to do the build to get some good footage if you want a simple time-lapse option, these, uh, or the, especially the TLC 200, they put out uh, uh, they put out a video-ready format, so uh, you don't have to kind of stitch all the JPEGs together like you would on the GoPro. The audio I've touched on already. The Video Mic Pro is on that camera, and I've got the Video Mic not Non Pro, which is the one we've used for the last four years, five years, and it's battered and in the last video you saw it snapped off its base I'll probably rig it up to some sort of boom and it can live in the workshop as an overhead mic all sorts of fluffy dead cats and things for the mics if we're out in the wind uh, in addition to that we've got a little zoom like this I have used it a couple of times on this channel with a little tie clip uh, mic and this in your pocket uh, when I did the garden and stuff you could be kind of hands free and you could be a good 20 meters away from the camera and still you know record decent audio so when it comes to lighting uh, really I just use natural light or whatever's around me uh, recently I've picked up a couple of LED panel lights they were for a specific photography project but I use them now in the workshop they're not super bright but they give a really nice even color balance um, variable uh, light on the back so I'm gonna use those more and more so if we do go down the route of renovating that garage workshop space or building that new workshop then we might just uh, integrate into that some more video lights because light is key really you know audio is really important but actually uh, if, if you've got decent lighting then it doesn't the lens is less important so I'd be, I'd be happier to use a cheaper lens which I don't mind being covered in dust uh, the cameras get really abused um, so you know the lighting really helps and, and just gives it a bit more of a production feel uh, then from over the years of doing film work I've got all sorts of shoulder mounts and rigs and sliders the frustrating thing for me is the lack of creativity in the videos now I try and pull it back in edit a bit with some music and different angles but in in, in essence all I can really produce is static shots because I'm the one doing whatever uh, work is doing, it might be planing timber or digging a ditch or something I can't give that handheld third person perspective which you might be able to get if you had two or three people so occasionally you know, I'll get Joe to film something or I'll be filming them doing something but the majority of the time you're going to have to kind of deal with a camera on a tripod and I'll try and move that around as much as I can to get the dynamic shots but there's always a limit. Now of course if the channel grew to a certain point then I might be able to rope someone in once a week to do a bit of filming and likewise if we're doing bigger projects in the future which in, uh, kind of involve uh, professional tradesmen uh, tradesmen coming in then I'll be able to do a bit more filming and get some better shots that way or if I'm filming someone else's project. Right I'll give you a quick look at my work gear uh, which there's a little bit of a crossover. Right, we'll swap over cameras to the YouTube camera and you can see the camera that's being filmed on and a little bit of my kind of day-to-day -day work gear. So this is my go-to work camera. It's the 5D Mark IV and it shoots great video if you're using it for that but most of my work is uh, still photography so uh, that's 
what I do with this. Uh, it's got the new uh, new lens to me, which is this the Tamron um, 24 to 70. So I got rid of my Canon uh, lens, which was my kind of walkabout n regular lens, and switched to this. Now it's 24 to 70 at 2.8, so it's a decent fast lens, but it's near enough silent. It's also image stabilized, which is it's only I think this one in the Sigma. It's great for video work, so occasionally I'll use it on the channel and hopefully I'll use it a little bit more, but of course I can't risk taking this into the workshop, getting it covered in dust and ruining the sensor uh, if it's the day before a, a client job. So uh, that's kind of the go-to pairing. And then I'll give you a quick look at my kit bag and then I think that'll be it. So this is my regular work bag. Uh, there's kind of all bits and bobs everywhere. Um, but as far as the main stuff I use in here, and some of this I do use on the channel, uh, this is the main camera, the 5D Mark IV. 5D Mark III, which is a bit of a uh, bit battered now, but it's a great camera still. Um, that's kind of my secondary camera. Needs a, probably a good sensor clean now. Uh, but that's my backup. A few other lenses which occasionally come out for filming. Um, this is the 50mm 1.4 Sigma. I think it's been replaced, or at least there's an art series one now, which might be quieter. This chugs around like a train as far as the autofocus, so unless you're using uh, off-camera audio, it's not particularly great for YouTube-style work, but great footage and perfect in low light. 7200, it's a big chunky lens, and it produces really nice video, but you can't really be filming yourself. It's only for sort of b-roll stuff or if you're uh, getting a few shots from afar again a little bit noisy to be using with on-camera audio but you probably wouldn't be using on-camera audio at this length and another Sigma I've kind of moved over to Sigma because really the the image quality difference versus the price difference is so minimal um, and and this is a great one this is a really nice lens for portrait work but it's also macro, so it's come out when I was doing the fish tank video and cl real close-ups if you want a bit more arty footage. And it's a 2.8, but the depth of field is so minimal, you've got to be really bang on with your focus. Uh, but a great portrait lens and good for kind of general purpose stuff. Again, it's image stabilised, so pretty handy for filming. Last of all, when it comes to lenses, is this Samyang, or I think they come under a variety of different names. Uh, this is a 14mm and it's the cinema version. Uh, I use this mainly actually for interiors, some, sometimes for video and uh, a lot of the time for stills. Not that relevant to YouTube, but I use off-camera flash quite a bit in my work. So these are the 600 uh, EXRT flashes and they are radio triggered. So I can use uh, this one here, which is just for the trigger. So you can stand, get these up on stands or hide them in bushes or whatever and you've got this as your trigger on camera. Okay, I hope that was a bit of an insight into what goes on behind the camera. Uh, but like I said, my go-to is that single camera on a tripod or the gorilla pod with the shotgun mic and that's pretty much it. You know, decent lighting or using natural light and you can get away with most stuff and you can produce some decent quality footage. One thing I haven't kind of mentioned is this. Now, if you're into producing your own videos or you just want to start, there is absolutely no reason why you can't do it all on an iPhone or a smartphone. I don't know what wizardry goes on in this tiny camera, but you can pull out some decent shots in low light. And of course, you're not gonna be able to blow them up huge and they might be a bit grainy and noisy, but if you need the shot, you're gonna have this close to hand. Uh, you can't really go wrong. Again, with Video, I, I'm not sure about, I don't use it for audio too much, but the video that comes out of these, slow motion, 4K, it's pretty punchy footage straight out of the phone. Uh, so, you know, think twice before you think you need to spend a load of money on gear before you can start your own YouTube channel. I was thinking I should probably finish by just giving you a little idea of my workflow from camera to YouTube. But looking at that desk, I just can't bring myself to show you the mess. Right, I'll try and give you a quick whistle stop tour. All the cards go into here, they're read straight onto the computer. 
Then they are backed up onto Drobo. One of these is for video, one of them's for stills, and that's what holds all of my content. And I really should start clearing out old content. I've got four years worth of video on here, but uh, that's kind of what that's telling me, that yellow light, that it needs a new drive. So those are a bit like RAID, so they they offer a redundancy. So if one of the drives crashes or breaks, then the others make up for it. This is the next video to come out. It's gonna be the uh, bookshelves for the girls' bedroom in the fireplace. It was a disaster of a project, but I'm going to show it anyway. And the problem with a lot of our YouTube f uh, videos is we film over several days. We're, we work full-time, both of us really, so whenever we've got time to do DIY, we film it, and then somehow a week later I've got to try and piece it together and make it look like one story. That's why sometimes it's a bit disjointed, but bear with us. We're trying our best. So from there, the video footage gets imported into Final Cut Pro, and that's where I do all the editing. It's, you know, I'm sure there's the Premiere versus Final Cut argument. Final Cut does everything I need it to, and all of our videos are pretty much no frills. They're kind of uh, fairly straightforward. That's a whole load of gear, but you've got to remember that my day job as a photographer, most of this gear I already had anyway. So you don't need it for YouTube. You definitely don't need it for YouTube. Um, and if we were buying all this stuff specifically for the channel, then we would just be, it would be a very expensive hobby because, you know, YouTube doesn't really generate much of an income anyway. Uh, and to start throwing all that straight at gear, then uh, it would just be counterproductive. So I would encourage you, if you're gonna start filming, then film on your phone, film on a basic kind of flip, flip up uh, point and shoot camera, because it's all about the content uh, and some decent audio and you're kind of halfway there. So don't worry too much about the editing and the software side of things afterwards. Don't worry too much about the fancy kind of shoulder rigs or sliders or anything like that. All that can come later if you really want to go that route. But at the end of the day, people are watching for the content for you and they kind of want to hear what you're talking about. So if you stick to those three things, you should be all right. So I hope that helps and maybe encourages some of you to get stuck in and film some of your own projects. We'll be back on the tools for the next one soon. That's it. So thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.